Well, hello everyone. Today I'm gonna to be doing a makeup tutorial inspired by Valentine's Day, and I actually asked you guys in my last video what kind of look you wanted to create this year. Like, what was your vibe? And the top two comments on my last video, one was from Kara. She said, I would love, love, love to see a dark, moody Valentine's Day look, something you can wear in a low light candle lit fancy restaurant. And I was like, ooh, okay. And then Ashley said, I would love to see your take on a sultry look for Valentine's Day. I think we get so many cutesy, soft, demure looks from other influencers for nearly everything. I vote for something sultry, sexy, with depth, but wearable and not editorial. So those were the top two comments. So it seems like a lot of you guys were on the same page. So that's what I'm taking inspo from. I really like that idea because I feel like it is so easy to just go for cute pink looks for Valentine's Day, which there's nothing wrong with. I love those kinds of looks, but let's switch it up a little bit. And I feel like a look like this is obviously not just something you could wear on Valentine's Day. It's gonna be something you can wear on any night out or a date night or whatever it is, any special occasion. So I'm excited and I immediately thought about using the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. That's just the palette that comes to mind and I feel like a lot of you guys have that. So I wanted to make sure to use an eyeshadow palette that you guys either own or have something similar to. An affordable dupe option for that is the Shadow Kiss Palette from Alter Ego. I'll have this link down below as well because it's so affordable and it's literally like the same thing, but I'm gonna be using the Glam Palette today. It's such a classic, it's so good. Normally with smoky eyes, I feel like I bring it up pretty high. This time I'm wanting to keep a lot of the definition around the eye a bit. And we are gonna use eyeliner today, which is kind of wild because I don't usually do that, but I really wanna make sure we get that sultry look. And I think that's gonna be key for this look. Starting off with the top row shade called Crease. I'm going to start by applying that in the crease of the eye. I'm not gonna bring it up too high just yet, but I do want some sort of a transition shade to get our look started. So I'm just gonna kind of use windshield wiper motions here, buffing and blending it out. That's the key to a smoky eye is really making sure that you blend. So I'm gonna sit here for a minute and just buff this out until it looks super seamless. I'm bringing what's left and kind of dragging it onto the eyelid. And then we're gonna kind of switch gears a little bit. I don't normally do this, but in order to create that sultry look focused around the eyelid or like the eyelash line, I guess I should say, we're gonna take an eyeliner first. So this one's just a brown eyeliner. You could use black if you want to. Since I'm somebody who doesn't use super intense black makeup around my eyes a lot, I'm gonna stick with a dark brown. If you're used to that or you use a black eyeliner, you could use a black, just, you know, whatever your preference is. But if you're wanting something a little bit more wearable, a dark brown is gonna do that. So this is the Makeup by Mario Dark Brown Pencil. Um, it's called the Perfect Brown. So we're gonna start by taking that and I'm going across the entire top lid like that. And then I'm gonna take a brush and while it's still damp, I mean, I don't know if damp is the right word, but it's not dry yet. We're gonna take that brush and just start to smudge this out. And this is something that does not have to be perfect because I am gonna go in with eyeshadow over top. I'm just really wanting to create a lot of definition right up against that lash line. And I feel like using this eyeliner first is gonna allow me to do that without worrying about messing up the eyeshadow, if that makes sense. So I'm just really smudging that right into the lashes. And again, like this is not a shape that we need to worry about because I am not going to keep this as is. We're gonna layer on eyeshadow. So it really doesn't have to be perfect at all or even. Like you don't have to worry about getting both eyes right. We're not doing like a detailed eyeliner look as much as a smudged out smoky eye. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this eye and just smudge it out. A lot of times too, I keep the definition on the outer portion of the eye. This time I really want the definition all the way around the eye just so that in low light you see the eyes. That's just my vision for this look based off of what you guys are requesting. All right, so now that we've got that smudged, we are gonna start building up the smoky eye. So I'm gonna take the shade Smoke, which is just a nice mid-tone brown, and I'm gonna start packing that over top of the eyeliner as well as onto the eyelid a bit. And I am gonna focus this color kind of on the outer edge. I do want some definition in that crease, so I'm blending it up, making sure that that looks nice and defined. But you can see how already we're like losing that stark line from the eyeliner, and it's more about just the brown on the lid. Next, I'm gonna take this bottom shade called Outer Eyelid, and I'm gonna take that on a brush. This is a really pretty dark shimmery brown, 
and I am gonna actually apply that to the outer eyelid. Keeping it closer to the lash line, but I am bringing it up and stopping it at the crease. And same thing on this eye. This is why it's important to do a smoky eye without base makeup first, because I feel like if you get fallout, you don't have to worry about it. Just makes it easier. It makes the cleanup easier as well. On the top row, there's another shade called Outer Eyelid, but this has a little bit more of an intensity to it. So I'm gonna take that on my fingertip and start applying that to the center of the eyelid, stopping it at the crease as well. I think this color is really, really pretty. I'm now gonna take the shade Center Eyelid on a brush and I'm just gonna kind of add that to the areas that we didn't apply a shimmer shade yet. So kind of in the inner corner, connecting it to that center lid shade. Okay, you know, I kind of take it back. I feel like we need a little bit of a darker liner. So I'm gonna take this black liner from Hourglass. You can use any black liner. And this time I am gonna kind of focus the black on the very outer corner, at least to start. And then this is something I rarely do, but for this sultry look, I think this detail is something that will really make a difference. I'm going to line the top waterline with this, just gently all the way from inner corner to outer corner. I just really want there to be a ton of definition around the lash line. Okay, I'm gonna take a makeup wipe and clean up the fallout underneath the eyes. I'm also gonna use this to kind of create the shape on the outer edge. So I do want it to be kind of lifted and almost like a wing without actually doing a wing liner. Just the eyeshadow will create that lifted shape. And then I'm gonna take my fingertip and just press that down so that it blends into the skin seamlessly. Adding a little bit of dark brown shadow just to this side of the eye so that it looks more even with the other one. I felt like I had a little more definition on that eye, so I'm adding a bit more just to make it look cohesive. Okay, now I feel like we need a really beefy mascara. So I'm gonna take my Makeup Forever mascara, um, the Lift, the Professional mascara. It has two sides to it. So I'm gonna start with the first side and just really get into the roots of the lashes with this. And we're just doing mascara on the top lid for now. And then immediately after, I like to take step two, the volume mascara, and work that in to the lashes right on top of step one. I like to do a lot more coats of this because this is where I feel like I see the most difference. I love how much this adds volume to the lashes. If you're somebody who prefers to use um, false lashes, this is a great look to do that as well. For me, I feel like I can just build up mascara and get the effect that I want, but this is where you can kind of, you know, assess your own situation and decide how bold you want to go on the lashes because I just think with this look, I didn't want it to be too much about the eyeshadow, even though it's nice and smoky, it's still wearable. I think the definition using eyeliner and the mascara is gonna be what really creates that sultry look that's still wearable and approachable. That's what I'm going for. I wanna use a glowy primer, so I'm gonna take the Smashbox Photo Finish Illuminate Glow Primer, and we're just gonna use this all over the face. If you're following along, just use your favorite primer. Like, this is where you wanna just use um, complexion products that you trust. For a date night or like a night out, I always, always reach for things that I know will work, especially if there's gonna be pictures. Like any special occasion makeup is not the time, in my opinion, to try something super new, unless it's like a lip product or something like that. But as far as complexion goes, I don't like to try new things on a special occasion night because I just feel like it's time to be really confident with how your makeup's gonna wear so that you can be confident in yourself and like feel really good for the night or the event or whatever it is. So I'm gonna use the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. This is such a great glam foundation. I'm just gonna start applying that, focusing on the areas that I need the most coverage, which for me is on the sides of the face actually. So I have quite a bit of redness there. And then I'm just gonna work whatever's left on the foundation brush onto the rest of the skin. And then I'm just gonna press that in with my sponge. My lips are like stained fuchsia because I just filmed a lip swatch video. Actually, I filmed it like two days ago of the Hourglass um, Unlocked Lipsticks. I told you guys I would film a lip swatch video and I decided to post it on shorts. So if you haven't seen it, I'll have it linked down below, but it's just like barely coming off of my lips. <laughs> I had to like just do a makeup look that would look good with fuchsia lips for a couple days there because it was so stained, bright fuchsia, but that's okay, it's worth it. I wanna use a cream contour. I'm looking for my Westman Atelier cream contour, but I don't see it. Just kidding, I found it. Whatever your favorite cream contour stick is, this one is just so good. And obviously this is a pretty bougie product, so you do not have to use this one. It's just what I personally 
really, really like. I don't know, it just blends itself out. It's such a good formula. Some other cream contour favorites are the Charlotte Tilbury one. I really like the Mario contour stick as well. You could use a darker foundation if you wanted to. I mean, honestly, whatever. So I'm just applying that like this all over the face. And then I'm gonna take my cream contour brush and just start blending that up to start to create that definition on the face. Cause even though this is gonna be a look that will look good in low light, just in case, just in case you start your date when the sun's not down or before you've gotten into the restaurant, I think it's also important to do your makeup in a lighting that will look good in the daytime or in lighter light too, not just in low light. At the same time though, in order for it to look good in low light, you want that definition. So something that's gonna blend out really well, but also add the perfect amount of definition is what you're gonna wanna reach for. So whatever that is in your collection, use that. Or at least just kind of build up the product until you get that kind of a look. I always like to take my foundation brush and just go over top to make sure it's extra blended. Now that we've got that cream contour blended out, I'm gonna use concealer, let's see. Let's go with the classic today. Let's use the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I'm just using things that I have sitting on my desk. Cause again, this look is something that I wanna use products that I just know will work, you know? And this is one that's worked for a long, long time for me and for a lot of people. So just use your favorite. I'm gonna kind of highlight between the brows, bring that down the center of the nose as well. And a little bit right here along the jawline, just to kind of highlight that. I think that's good for now. I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that out underneath the eyes. And instead of taking it all the way up to the lash line, I'm kind of leaving a little bit of room there. I still want a bright under eye since we are doing more of a smoky eye, but I don't want to bring it all the way up to the lash line because I don't need to blank that out. Like I want some of that shadowing to naturally be there so that I can kind of work with that when applying my products to the lower lash line. So just gently blending that around the brows too. And then blending out the concealer underneath the contour on the sides of the face just to create even more definition there. But again, in a very wearable way, like I didn't use tons of product there but we're still getting good definition, which is gonna really show up in that low light. For powder, I'm picturing something a little bit more soft, blurred, and just, you know, flawless, airbrush. So I'm gonna use my Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Powder. This is the blurring powder though, and it is just exactly what it says. It's very blurring. So I'm gonna start by taking my little Huda Beauty Teeny Puff. I've really loved this recently. I just barely got it and tried it, but I really like it so far. And I'm gonna start by applying that underneath the eyes. That is the nice thing about low lighting is I do feel like you can get away with a little more makeup and you do want to add a little bit more, but be strategic in the layering so that it doesn't look too intense in lighter light, like I was saying. But it's just such a good time to kind of create that airbrushed flawless look because it's gonna look so pretty underneath low lighting in the evening or candlelight. So I'm just using this to really press in the foundation into the T-zone. That's where I get oily first. So I like to have the powder really, really set in this area. Plus I like a soft focus finish in the center of my face. And then I just take a different fluffier brush and lightly tap the cream contour on the outside of the face. I like to do this in case I want to add a little more bronzer and I wanna use a powder. That way it doesn't skip later. So I'm just gonna set the outside of the face as well. We're actually gonna go into the eyes next and finish up that lower lash line. So I'm gonna start off with the brown eyeliner. I might add black, we'll see. I feel like the brown might be enough for me on the lower lash line, but we'll see how it looks. I'm gonna start by taking this in the water line. We're gonna make sure to connect that outer corner. So we're really starting to build up the focus around the water line, which I think, again, looks so pretty. I don't always do my makeup like this, but I love it when other people do. And I always like save looks on Instagram that kind of have this vibe to it. So I'm glad you guys wanted a look like this cause it's kind of pushing me out of my comfort zone, but it's also reminding me that it's actually more wearable than I thought in my mind. On the other side of that eyeliner is a brush. So I'm just gonna actually use that to just kind of buff that out against the lower lash line. And I don't want any blank space showing um, between the lashes. So I'm really taking my time here to make sure that that eyeliner gets between every lash. I'm focusing most of the pigment on the lower lash line on that outer edge. And as we get closer to the inner corner, um, I just want a little less product. 
that will prevent my eye looking droopy to kind of keep most of that depth and definition on the outside, lifting the eye instead of dragging it down in the inner corner. Okay, we're dipping into the outer eyelid shade. We're just basically gonna copy what we did on the top lid. And I am gonna take a setting spray and make sure to spray the brush so that there's not too much fallout underneath the lower lash line while we do this. And I'm just gonna kind of smudge that into that lash line right on top of where we just smudged out the eyeliner. Okay, we're doing the same thing with the next shade, which was the outer eyelid shade on the top row. Spraying it with setting spray. I always like to kind of pat the brush on the back of my hand a couple times to make sure there's not any loose pigment. And we're applying that on like the inner third of the eye. And then I'm gonna take the center eyelid color, this one, which is what we used on kind of the inner portion. And I'm gonna add that right up until the very corner of the eye. I'm just gonna quickly brush away any fallout and then we're gonna take a fluffy brush and take the crease color, which we used on the top lid. And just on the very tip of that, I'm gonna use that to smudge out the lower lash line a little bit more so that it's not too stark and that there's like a good transition into the under eye area. Okay, part of me wants a little bit more depth with the black liner, so I'm actually, I keep like backtracking, but here I am trying something a little new. Um, I'm gonna take the black liner and just add that definition on the very outer corner and then also on like the outer third of the waterline. That way it's still a little more subtle toward the inner corner. I kind of like that idea of it moving from black to brown, but I want a lot of that definition on the very outer corner of the eye. Okay, now I'm gonna go back into the um, mascara and let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna start with the step one. Sometimes I skip step one, but in this case, I really want those lower lashes to be really defined. And I like this teeny brush because I can get into like the root of the lower lashes as well. So we're just gonna apply the mascara. I, I do wanna put a little bit of the volumizing formula on top, but on the lower lashes, we're gonna stick to mostly step one. You don't have to use like a double-ended mascara, just use your favorite. Your favorite top lash mascara, if you have a favorite lower lash mascara, just use that. Okay, again, I'm just taking my powder brush and brushing away any fallout. I do feel like I could use a little more warmth on the skin. I'm trying to decide which bronzer to use. I've got one sitting here. This is from Pure Cosmetics. It's the Bronzing Act bronzer. I like this shade for myself because it's like not too dark and I want the eyes to be the focal point. So I want that depth in the skin, but I don't want like my skin to be too bronzy and warm because the eyes are gonna be the center of attention for this look. But I do think when you have a little more definition around the eyes, I think it's important to make sure the face looks balanced as well. So I do feel like I need a little more like definition. Okay, I'm just wiping off any foundation that got on the lips. I'm gonna try out a couple of lip liners and then we'll do blush because I just wanna see what the lip color ends up being. Yeah, I think this one is perfect for this look. This is NYX Nude Beige. Like I'm wanting something that's not gonna overpower the look because the eyes are enough. So I want to do like a really nice lighter nude lip, which I also think is helpful if you are going out to dinner, at least for me anyway, because then you don't have to worry about the way it wears off. It's a little bit more forgiving when you're eating, you know, versus like a bright red lip when you're going out to dinner, unless it's like a bulletproof liquid lipstick or something. So I'm just lining and kind of filling in the lips with this. I do want to kind of revisit my eyebrows, which I filled in first, I should have mentioned probably, with the Anastasia Brow Definer. Now I'm gonna use the Anastasia Brow Wiz, which is a little bit more of a precise pencil. I'm just gonna really make sure that the brows stay defined. Sometimes they lose a little bit of their definition when I do them first, but I like to do them first to like gauge where I'm putting my eyeshadow if I'm doing my eyes first, so it's helpful, but I do have to touch up afterwards usually. Because I think when you do a smoky eye, having a pretty defined brow is important. You don't need it to be like super crazy, but at least for me, I find that things feel a little more complete and more intentional that way. I'm taking the tiniest bit of concealer. This is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Seriously, the tiniest bit. And just running that underneath the brow so that there's still like a clean line. Also, I'm gonna make sure it looks pretty clean on top of the brows too, like this. I have already become such a fan of the Hourglass Unlock lipsticks. And as I swatched them, I was able to like get a feel for all the shades. 
I feel like this shade would look really pretty with this look. This is the lightest shade in the bunch. It's called Tide. Let's try this. My favorite nude from the collection is called Oasis, but I do feel like something a little bit lighter would really suit this look. So pretty. Okay, we need to complete the look with some blush, but I've gotta be strategic about the blush as well. So let me go to my blush drawer and pick something out. Okay, I immediately saw this and grabbed it. This is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's their stick blush in the shade Latte. It's just the perfect like neutral blush. So I'm gonna take this and just kind of, let me make sure I don't have anything on the back of my hand first before I do this. Um, but I'm gonna kind of blend it out on the back of my hand, like melt it like this. It's the perfect neutral blush. I'm gonna pick that up on a brush and then just kind of tap that into the cheeks. And I'm just gonna slowly layer this until I get the right amount of pigment that I'm looking for because I don't want it to overpower the eyes, but I also don't want to look washed out. So I'm trying to kind of find that perfect balance. So I'm just slowly building up, kind of adding some to the forehead to kind of add a bit of warmth there as well. Okay, I feel like that's good. And I'm gonna take my sponge and kind of press around that. And then I need a foundation powder, one second. <laughs> okay, this one's from Fenty Beauty. It's the shade 150. I actually never used this the way that I'm gonna use it. I normally use the Makeup Forever one, but it's up in my purse right now, so I don't have it. I just wanted to take a foundation powder right up against the eye to kind of make that a little bit more clean than it was before. There we go. It's all in the little details, I feel. We are gonna assess the situation. I'm taking a little bit more bronzer from the bronzer brush, just adding that. I do feel like it does need a little inner corner brightness. So I'm gonna go back into the Natasha Denona palette we're gonna take this color, which is called Inner Corner. There's a few of them, so I have to show you which one I'm using. And I'm just gonna pop that in the inner corner, focusing it more on the top lid than the bottom lid, if that makes sense. Just like that to add a bit of brightness. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna set the face. I'm gonna use my Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury and really just drench the face. I'm gonna let that dry halfway. And then when it's almost dry, I love to take my sponge and just go over everything to really make sure there's no powdery finish. I think setting spray is key when you do a full glam look to kind of take away some of that makeup-y finish, you know, since it is a little bit more makeup, but we don't want it to look that way. We want it to look very skin-like and setting spray really is key, I think, in achieving that look. I'm gonna take one of my favorite highlighters. This is the Victoria Beckham, um, like balmy highlight. I'm just gonna take that on the sponge. I just made up that name. It's not called the balmy highlight, but that's just how I describe the texture. And I'm gonna apply that to just the high points of the cheeks. So we get a little bit of freshness back in the skin, um, but I'm gonna leave the T-zone bare so that we still have more of that airbrush finish in the center of the face. Just taking what's left on my powder brush one more time through the T-zone. And then I'm gonna take my Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter to lock those brows into place. Okay, so there you have it. There's my take on a sultry, but still wearable Valentine's Day inspired look. If you guys recreate this look, I would love to see. So tag me if you do. Um, I feel like it's actually really, really pretty. I, I don't really do my makeup like this a lot, but now that I'm looking at it, I can see myself in like my big mirror far away. I feel like I should do my makeup more like this for date nights, just something that's really different. I don't know, cause you know me and my ethereal pinks and things like that and my sparkly eyelids. I think it's kind of fun to switch it up a little and do something a little more sultry and a little more like smoky and intense around the eyes. Cause I love my light, airy, you know, ethereal looks so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this and thank you so much for inspiring this look by commenting on my last video. That was so fun to take your comments and then create something with you guys in mind. So I truly, truly hope that you like this look. I wanna know what you guys are doing this Valentine's Day. Leave it in the comments down below. Are you staying home? Are you going out? Are you having a Galentine's Day? What are you doing? So I would love to hear what you guys are up to. I don't even know what we're doing. You know, I feel like since we just had a baby, I think we'll probably just stay in, order some takeout. I'll probably be in sweatpants, but I might do my makeup like this. <laughs> That's a vibe. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I would love to hear what you guys are up to. I had a lot of fun just doing my makeup and kind of focusing on 
more of like a technique and tutorial versus products or reviewing something. So I had fun. If you haven't joined the family, I would love for you to do so. You can hit the subscribe button. And then also if you want to be notified every single time I post, click on the notification bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification when I upload. Yeah, that's it for me today. I hope you guys have an amazing day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.